You can use user defaults to store any basic data type for as long as the app is installed. You can write basic types like bool or float or double, int, string or URL, but you can also write more complex types like arrays, dictionaries and dates, and even data values. When you write things to user defaults, it automatically gets loaded when your app runs so you can read it back again. This makes using it really easy, but you need to know it's a bad idea to store lots of data in there because it will slow down loading of your app. If you think your saved data would take up more than, say, 100 kilobytes or so, user default is almost certainly the wrong choice. Before we get into modifying Project 10, we're going to do a little bit of test coding first to find out what user defaults let us do. So I'll go ahead and launch Xcode, then choose a new Xcode project, and I'll choose iOS Single View App, and call this thing Project 12, just testing purposes, on my desktop. So this is just really so we can test out user defaults. So I'll go to viewcontrol.swift, hide this thing on the right here, and I'll say uh, let defaults equals user defaults dot standard. That gives us the standard user defaults that belongs to our program that gets saved and loaded automatically when our app launches. Once that's done, it's easy to read a variety of values. You just need to give each one a unique key so you can reference it later on. These values nearly always have no meaning outside of what you use them for, so let's make sure the key names are memorable. For example, we could say defaults.set25 for key age, or defaults.set true for key use face ID, or defaults.set cgfloat.py for key pi. So as you can see, set takes different kinds of things, integers, booleans, CG floats, and more, but it always has a key name attached to it, a key string. You can also use set to store strings, arrays, dictionaries, and dates. So let's try out some more. We'll say defaults.set, I'm gonna pass in Paul Hudson for key name. Uh, then defaults.set, I'll create a new date for the key last run. So that's strings and dates working great. Again, you can do arrays and dictionary just fine. We could say uh, let array equals, scroll around just slightly, uh, hello and then world and defaults.set that array for the key saved array. And for dictionary, we'll say let dict equals Name is Paul, country is UK, and defaults.set dict for key saved dictionary, like that. So that's enough of writing stuff. You've seen how we're writing integers, booleans, CG floats, strings, dates, arrays, and dictionaries. Let's now look at reading. When you're reading values from user defaults, you need to check the return type carefully to ensure you know what you're getting. Here's what you need to know. Integer for key returns an integer if the key existed, or zero if not. Bool for key returns a bool if the key existed, or false if not. Float returns a float, or 0.0, .0 if not. Double, a double, or 0, 0, if not. Object for key returns optional any, so you want to conditionally typecast it to your data type. Now all this matters because if you use, say, bool for key and get back false, does that mean the key didn't exist? Or did it perhaps exist and was just set to be false? And in practice, it's object for key that will cause you the most bother because you get an optional object back. So you have to do a conditional typecast to make sure it's the right type you expected. Alternatively, use nil coalescing instead. Let's try some of these out now. We'll say, let saved integer be equal to defaults dot integer for key age. And now safe integer will either be zero or in our case, 25. That was what was set up here. We could do let saved boolean be defaults dot boolean for key. And we're gonna say uh, use face ID. Then let save CG float and so forth. Again, again, again. And the only problematic one here, 
are the arrays and dictionaries because you have to use object for key to read these things out. So we'd write code like this. Let's saved array is defaults dot object for key saved array conditional typecast string array failing that nil coalescing a new empty string array. So if saved array exists, it'll be loaded, placed into the saved array constant and typecast as a string array. But if it doesn't exist or does exist and isn't a string array, then it'll have make an empty string array here. This technique also works with dictionaries, but obviously you've got to typecast it correctly. So to read this thing we saved earlier, this dict up here, we'd write code like this. Let save dictionary be equal to defaults dot object for key. Saved dictionary. Conditional typecast as a string string dictionary. Nil coalescing, empty string string dictionary, like that. And that'll provide us that same thing we saved just earlier. Now there are methods on user defaults to do arrays and dictionaries. We could have said, for example, uh, let saved array two be equal to defaults dot array for key. And you'll get back uh, an array of any you can then try and typecast. But it's an optional array of any. So you've got to do a typecast to make sure there's a value there and typecast to be a string array. So it's not very pleasant. There is a dedicated string array for, which would also potentially work here, but generally I don't use that. I normally use object for key. Uh, for dictionaries, there is dictionary for key. This has to have a string as its key though, so it isn't very flexible compared to having the regular object for key, which would have anything as its key. 